this is our annual report on uh, software development. Normally, I'd have Dr. Martin Tavolio lead this, but uh, we we uh, it dumbed it down so I could I could share this, and uh, we'll just give you a review of what we're what we're doing, why we're doing it, and how we're partnering with Masa to get the job done. So, uh, three years ago, we were at a point that we needed to uh, maintain the software. We need to keep our FBS software up to date. And we looked at uh, our different alternatives and the pace we we're going was gonna take us years and years and years to get caught up. So we needed to partner with Masa. We looked at several options about uh, uh, bringing in developers. We had FBS at the time, we had two developers. Uh, we looked at what happened if we had five developers, seven developers, uh, what we, how we, where we go. And this is looking at uh, just, these are, these are just prototypes back in the, 18 and in 2018, but it looked like we would be October 23, yes, uh, uh, two years from uh, from now <coughs> when we'd be done. <coughs> we looked at uh, here's some other options, and uh, so so we we've looked at the most effective way of accomplishing what would need to be done, and the two things that were our primary focus was moving to a modern updated platform. We were running uh, Visual Basic for a uh, uh, for, uh, programming language and uh, a flat files and a few, few uh, uh, access files, JET files for our database. And we needed to bring things up in a, in, in a modern architecture that would grow. So um, what, this is an interim report from uh, from uh, 2019, a year after we got started, we're just starting to ramp up. We we brought in five, end up with five developers, and and uh, what we saw is even even at this route, the pace we're going, it was going to be uh, October 2022 before we got done, and so uh, we went to a went to a uh, German firm that uh, did up offshore development, and they had. Uh, contract and they had the uh, technology for converting Visual Basic to .NET. Uh, we hired them to do that, sped up the process, and our team was working on um, testing that, uh, working on database uh, uh, changes. And so we're at the point, uh, here's our current, uh, current status right now. And we just review things uh, uh, last year, we released version 11.4, and that's uh, um, and that included some some database conversion on crop audit and accounting. There was a there was a, a conversion between the prior version 11.3. It was uh, it, it was an incremental change. And that's what we're doing with an integrated system. We really we we neither have to stop uh, shipping changes to anything, and that's. And then just go to a total, uh, a total uh, uh, restart, or um, and and you just have to wait for, for things to happen. Or we can do a rolling change. We were able to do that. So some of our code was still in Visual Basic, and some of was in .NET. Some of them had tables updated, some didn't, and and uh, that kept the continuity going. That's one of the things we believe is important. The, this year we released 11.5 in, in uh, first in March. It was the first one with a complete .NET conversion uh, on accounting, and uh, because accounting is touches practically all of our users, and uh, there's no data conversion with that. Uh, one of the things we discovered is that for very large data files, it was slower for accounting input and faster for accounting. Uh, uh, faster for accounting reports or with slower for accounting reports. And that's, we've, we've made changes now, so now it's faster for accounting reports to look for. And, uh, and now we're working on 11.6, which uh, includes .NET converted smart feeder reports and crop audit reports. Uh, there's still no data conversion. And uh, this would be faster input for accounting. And then we switched to 64-bit uh, uh, 
reporting engine, and we knew we were going to have to do that. We decided to speed that along because that's, that's something that you can not notice. And then uh, it follows an export, more updated ex export to Excel. The next version of coming out in the end of the year, if we're still on pace of development, is uh, .NET transition for smart feeder input, crop audit input, life cycle budget, uh, adding a few more tables, uh, database tables, provisions, and smart feeder. We've uh, we made this, uh, even though a lot of these things are under the, under the hood, you, there's not much of a change in user interface. These are the essentials, and we wanted to avoid, eight, three years ago, we wanted to avoid mission creep. There are just so many things we can be doing. I think this statement that uh, it's never done, that's, that really applies to, to the software. you got to keep, keep going. The most important thing was to bring things up to date on the, on the, on the uh, current on-premise version of the software. With the idea there's some more things coming and, and that's what we're going to bring Joe. Joe's going to bring us up to date on, on uh, what's going on. So while Norm brings up the, uh, the couple slides that we have, this is kind of an update from MASA, which is the uh, group of FBS users who um, are putting the capital into um, updating the code. So phase one of that endeavor here was to simply prepare the, the code to be able to enter um, enter the, the new cloud space. And so we're, we're just about done with that phase. And the board of Moss has been working really hard on trying to get a good understanding of um, what we, need to start developing in phase two to provide a high value accounting solution to that cloud ecosystem. Um, so this is this was our uh, visioning, if you will, of a cloud ecosystem with our logo at the middle, right? Um, where everything revolves around accounting, everyone knows that. Um, so, so the, the theory is relatively simple and certainly congruent with all these other presentations we've heard um, today where, where we have terrestrial MOS or FPS as we know it. And then uh, we spin a replication of the data up into the cloud. And then it's in a format where we can use API connections uh, to hook into any of these management widgets um, or apps out here and do data transfer through APIs rather than um, the TA import export function or the Packer interface or the feed mill interfaces. Um, so a, a, a faster, more seamless connection um, there. And then uh, also utilize um, these uh, already created cloud accounting widgets that are out there and available. Uh, if we can speak their language, we can we can tie that functionality um, on as well. And then some of the other concepts we're working on betting out here would be um, a place to store non-accounting data on uh, warehouse, uh, a farm's information. You know, we talk about whose data is it? Is the farm's data? Well. How functional is that for you if you actually don't have a copy of it, don't have access to it, um, or don't have a way to actually view any of it outside of the provider's um, platform? Uh, so if you, if you want to have some, some control over that, you better find a place to park that. So if we're going to have a managed cloud ready, um, adding that functionality seems like a... a um, potential area of development. And then uh, kind of the, what's the end game, right? The, the end game is not only to just have um, records, but um, to be able to, to fill the buckets of uh, data needed to drive these business intelligence uh, platforms and have that, that ready to go information. So, um, 
to see. Norm, do you have, can you pull up the slide from our other presentation with, that has the bullet points for our development yeah. on Division, objectives Division. a second? Yeah. So, um, so this, this is kind of the concept and with, uh, with the code prepared to, to enter the cloud area, um, we will we will be working on um, fine tuning a, a business plan for that and uh, raising capital for that round. So it's a really exciting uh, step for for the Masa Group here and for the the development and longevity of the FBS uh, solution as we know it um, here too. So that's we're um, this is kind of all coming together relatively quickly for us. So we're, we're really excited about that. And um, the this concept that the landscape is changing so much um, is, I mean, that's really happening in real time. And uh, the MASA groups, clarity of the picture that we're looking at of what, what we have to have in our solution um, will be or is developed enough that we're going to be able to confidently put our our capital um, into that. Brian, you know how far in? Okay, beautiful. So we we wanted to share um, our product vision here of a couple of the nuts and bolts of the things that we we think are kind of practical applications. So one of the first things, and these aren't necessarily in a prior priority order. But it's kind of like the next bucket of things we'll work at, we'll work on. So, automated bank connections and digital invoicing and payments, right? All that, the e, everything that we know and love about uh, e banking, right? We want, we want that. Bring that, bring that along. All the good stuff, none of the bad stuff, right? Um, raw data storage. I talked about that one in the last one. That's part of that green blob. Um, APIs, um, and then a, a component of uh, development operations. So obviously, um, the what it, what it takes, what you're actually doing as Masa when you're developing these new cloud tools is different than doing a, a code conversion. So we need to have the staff and professional staff uh, to be able to provide those solutions to to our customers and users. Um, then we think a uh, budgeting, planning, forecasting um, component of the program uh, that's updated will be very beneficial. Um, and then output database, BI ready, so that'd be um, report functionality, business integration, or uh, intelligence functionality. Um, What's available there, kind of out of the shelf, is off of the shelf is a, amazing, um, and we can finally tie some of that stuff in. Um, improving and modernizing the user interface, um, some tweaks to asset management. A lot of our businesses are pretty asset heavy, um, and they have their own uh, management portions that need to be addressed so so modernizing those tools and then um one of the greatest strengths of the fbs product is its flexibility and robustness and one of the greatest weaknesses of the fbs product is its flexibility and robustness um so uh, trying to simplify and automate some of the uh, dominoes of setup functions that need to happen accurately as you um, manipulate your program um, are things that we're, we're hoping to uh, improve in this next phase of development. So it's a, it's an exciting time for the, the master group and there'll be plenty more uh, to come on this in the future, but this is uh, this is what we've got to share with the group here today.
any um, several other board members here, Norm, anyone want to add anything to that? All right. Okay. Good. John. Here, I'll, I'll run the mic out to you. Just if you are interested um, in MASA, reach out to one of us. Um, know that there's changes in the works as we bring this new business plan online. So just giving you a heads up on that. So with that, um, yeah, we've got a few board members here. Reach out to Norm or myself if you have questions. Thank you.